Hi guys, it's Mike and once again I'm teamed up with the guys at Watch It Paint It. In this video I'm going to be showing you my method for painting the Minotaur from Massive Darkness. So to start off I detached the Minotaur from the base and primed it from below with black primer. In some places I had to use a brush on primer to get spots that the spray couldn't reach. Next I used Corax White and sprayed the Minotaur at a 45 degree angle from above. The Minotaur is really easy to detach, in fact you may not even need a knife. I just wiggled a bit and the feet just popped right off. Since this is quite a large base, I want to add a bit of interest to it, so I'm cutting up a piece of cork to add a small hill. Next I'm adding some Vallejo Earth to the base, and I'm using this as the glue for a rock, as well as just creating some ground texture. I'm going to set that aside and work on the Minotaur itself. As you can see, the Minotaur is mostly skin, so I plan to use three different colors to try to break up the monotony a bit. This is of course totally optional. The two-tone prime will already help create a bit of shadow in the dark areas, so you could just use one skin color for the whole thing if you wanted to. So for the lightest tone, I'm going to be using Pure Iridian Flesh from P3, and for the darkest tone, I'll be using Rhinox Hide from Games Workshop. Then I'll create a tone in the middle using roughly equal parts of each. This two-tone prime is going to be my guide for where each skin tone goes. For all the completely black areas of the skin, I'm going to use the Rhinox Hide. This is going to look a bit strange until we blend everything together, but it's a very simple way to get some strong highlights. So this is basically all I've painted with the Rhinox Hide. Now moving on to the Midway Tone, and this color is going to cover the most area. Basically anything that has a mix of black and grey on it is going to get this color. Only the very top of the Minotaur's shoulders, back and arms received purely light primer, so these are the areas that are going to get the lightest skin tone. In a few spots there are small patches of really light paint, like on the tops of the thighs and the knees. In these spots I'm going to first paint them with the Midway Tone, and then just wet blend in a little of the pure Iridian Flesh right on the model to lighten it up. I've now switched to the lightest skin tone, and so far I've made no effort to blend these colors together. I do often wet blend the transitions, but there's other ways to blend, and I'll show one of these ways once the final skin color is on. So here's how the Minotaur is looking with all the skin colors on, but with no blending between them. And that's what I'm going to do next while I still have the skin colors on my palette. So to do the blending, I've first watered my paint down to about 50-50 water and paint, and now it's just a glaze. So when I spread some on my thumbnail, I can see my thumbnail just barely through the paint. Then I'm just brushing from the darker area into the light area with the skin tone on my brush. And don't be afraid to extend quite far into the darker skin, this will give you some room to make a cleaner transition. You can sometimes get away with using only one layer of paint with this method, but it depends on how close the colors are to each other. I did two thin layers to make the transition from light to dark smooth enough that it's not really noticeable. Next I'm going to paint all of the straps and the belts with German Grey. Now there's a strap with buckles on it that runs across the chest, but unfortunately you can't see it due to the massive axe this guy is carrying. I'm also using the German Grey to paint the trim on the thigh armor and the bracer on the left arm, as well as the wrist strap on the right arm. Next I'm going to paint the loincloth and some of the armor. For the leather armor on the thigh and the left wrist, I'm using Corn Red. I plan on painting the large pauldron on the left shoulder with a metallic red, but I'm first giving it an undercoat of Corn Red.
And I know I said I was going to paint these straps on the wrist with the German grey, but then I forgot, so I'm painting them now. That's all the red areas completed, and now I'm going to use Death World Forest for the loincloth. Once again, you can't see what I'm doing in the front, so you'll have to trust me when I say I'm painting it green. So much of this miniature is difficult to reach without removing the base first. My strategy here is to paint all the inaccessible areas first so I can then glue this to the base and stop touching the actual miniature. Next I'm painting all the bling hanging from the minotaur using blighted gold. And again there's a lot of this on the front and the chest as well. Now moving on to the large metal rings and some of the plate armor. For all of these I'm using plate mail metal. I'm also using this for all the buckles on the belt and the straps on the front of the minotaur. This arm guard looks like it should be metal so I'm also giving it a coat of plate mail steel. So that I feel is enough painted in the hard to reach places, so I'm now going to shade and highlight those areas so I can attach the Minotaur back on its base and stop touching the paint with my fingers. Right now I'm using a 2 to 1 mix of Reichland Flesh Shade and Drukii Violet. The Flesh Shade on its own I don't think would be dark enough to shade down skin that is this dark. Next I'm going to shade the rest of the painted areas, starting with a loincloth. For this I'm going to be using Ethonian Camo Shade. For all the leather straps and silver metal areas I'm going to be using Null Oil. For everything painted gold, I'm using Agrax Earthshade. And finally, I'm using Caraberg Crimson on the red armor on the hip and on the wrist, but not the shoulder armor. There's not a lot of highlighting that I'm going to do for the chest since it's barely visible, but I do want to make some of these features stand out. I'm starting with all the black leather straps. For these, I'm highlighting with Eschen Grey, which is just a bit brighter than the original German Grey. For any rounded surfaces, like on the top of the wrists or the top of the thigh, I'm only painting the top half of the strap and leaving the underside dark. Now I can't show you how I highlighted the front of the loincloth, but I am going to do the exact same thing on the back. I'm using a 2 to 1 mix of Death World Forest and Ogren Camo, so this is only slightly brighter than the original color. I'm going to use this one color for the highlighting for now, and then come back and do more on the back part when I highlight the rest of the model at the end. For the red areas that got the Carolberg Crimson, I'm just doing a reapplication of the corn red. I'm painting most of the material, but not right up to the edge. I want a line of shadow between the red on the armor and the gray straps. And same here with the loincloth. I'm painting close to it, but making sure that I leave that line of shadow. The minotaur, I feel, is now ready to be reattached to the base. But before I glue it on, I'm going to paint the rock in the dirt, because it's way easier to do that now. 
So you just saw the paints I'll be using on the base, and I'm starting with a 2 to 1 mix of Mechanica Standard Grey and Stegadon Scale Green for the rock. Next I'm painting the dirt with a 1 to 1 mix of Steel Legion Drab and Dryad Bark. I'm using a cheap plastic brush for this because the rough texture is going to destroy the bristles on this brush. Now I'm doing two layers of dry brushing for the rock, starting with a 1 to 1 mix of Mechanica Standard Grey and Celestra Grey. I'm then going to follow that up with a dry brush of just pure Celestra Grey. And similarly with the dirt, I'm first going to dry brush the entire thing with Steel Legion Drab, and then I'll follow that up with a dry brush of Zandri Dust. Finally, I'm going over all the dirt with a layer of Agrax Earthshade. And now I can finally glue this guy on and not have to worry about getting painty fingerprints all over him, which did happen a couple times while filming this. Once the glue is dry, I'm once again going to take advantage of the two-tone prime and paint the handle of the axe. The black area is getting a couple coats of XV88, and the light area is being painted with Baylor Brown. With the axe done, I'm now going to move on to the hair. I'm first mixing a 50-50 mix of Skaven Blight Dinge and Abaddon Black, and I'm going to use this to base coat all of the fur. Once that's dry, I'm taking some pure Skaven Blight Dinge, and I'm painting the top 75% or so of the hair. I'm just leaving the darker color showing in all the grooves, and this mostly affects the top of the head and the braids. Once again, I'm letting that dry before doing a light dry brush on the top surface of the hair with some pure Storm Vermin Fur. Next I'm moving on to the horns, and I decided to go with a light bone color, and to create this I'll be using a 50-50 mix of Ivory and Hammerfall Khaki. Hammerfall Khaki, if you don't have it, is very similar to Carrick Stone. Now I'm going back to the plate mail steel again. There's a few places that didn't get the paint that still need it, such as all the metal attachments to the horns and the axe, the ring through the nose, and I'm also going to use this as a base coat on the head of the axe. I am going to be doing some very basic true metal metallic effects on the axe near the end of this video that are a good place to start if you've ever wanted to try out this technique. The base coat on the underside of the axe will be equal parts plate mail steel and black. Next, I'm mixing up equal parts glorious gold and shining silver to do a gold trim on the shoulder pauldrons. I'm also using this gold to paint the raised emblems on the shoulder armor. For some reason this minotaur has a cowbell hanging from one of his horns, but hey, who am I to say anything? You can always use more cowbell. I'm going to paint the bell and all the rings using Balthazar Gold. Next I'm just painting some of the smaller details. For all the little connectors between the bits of jewelry, I'm using Gunmetal Grey. For the bit of fabric on the axe, I'm using Deathworld Forest. And for the red pauldron, I'm using a red metallic paint called Screaming Bell. For the two hooves, I'm once again using Hammerfall Khaki. Next, I'm going to do the color transition on the tip of the horn. I'm using four colors for this, starting from light brown to black. I'm going to be using a technique that some people call the 50% rule. I didn't know it had a name until recently, so don't quote me on that. So I first painted the tip with some Hammerfall Khaki, and now I'm painting 50% of that area with some Steel Legion Drab. 
Then I'm switching to Dryad Bark and I'm painting 50% of the Steel Legion Drab with this color. And finally I'm painting 50% of the Dryad Bark with Abaddon Black. I gave those time to dry and I'm watering down all those same colors to a glaze. Starting with the lightest color, I'm going about halfway into the next color and brushing towards the color that's on my brush. Then I'm going to repeat this for each color. You may need to do a couple layers of some of your colors depending on how thin you made them, but after even one layer you should see these colors transitioning fairly smoothly. While I've got some of the Steel Legion drab water down, I'm going to dab some of it upwards towards the hair on the foot to make a slight color shift at the top of the hoof. And the last thing I'll do for the color transition on the horn is to mix a bit of ivory into the khaki color so that I'm back to the original horn color. And I'm going to smooth out the border of where I started with that khaki. That's all the base colors done and I'm only going to need two colors of wash for the shading. I'm starting off with Agrax Earthshade and I'm shading the horns, the hooves, and the entire axe handle. Now I don't plan on highlighting this horn because I don't want to ruin that transition. So instead I'm taking a damp brush and I'm wiping away most of the wash from the top of the horn to make it slightly brighter. I also don't plan on highlighting this axe handle because there's already some great shadow going on with the two-tone prime and the two base colors. But I am being very careful not to allow too much pooling as well. Now I do have some bad news, the clip of me using the Null Oil was corrupted, but it was a very simple step anyhow. I used the Null Oil on everything else that didn't get washed yet except the axe blade. So that means the metal rings, both shoulder pauldrons, all of the hair, and the steel armor on the left arm. The next step is to start the highlighting. The skin does not need much work, but I am going to highlight the brightest areas of the skin. I'm starting off by reapplying the original Iridian Flesh to the areas that were painted that color. I'm avoiding getting too close to the grooves in the muscles and I'm always trying to paint upward towards the brightest area. One thing that I couldn't show due to the axe was me highlighting the abs. I used the half Iridian Flesh, half Rhinox Hide mix and I just painted each ab to make it stand out. For the final skin highlight, I mixed in some cardic flesh to brighten this up a bit, and I'm only using this in select places, such as the very top of the arm and the shoulder muscles and key features of the face. I'm painting the fingernails with pure cardic flesh. For the lips and the snout, I'm starting off with pure Iridian Flesh and then switching to the lighter skin color mix. Now I'm using some Shining Silver from Army Painter to do some edge highlights on the steel and light gold areas. I'm just painting around the outside edge of the trim and the edges of anything that's sticking up. I'm using the Shining Silver on the edges of the dents and the scratches to give the impression of the paint being chipped off. The Minotaur also has several rings in one ear and rings holding the braids together. These are also getting the silver paint. For the hair I'm just doing one final light dry brush with Storm Vermin Fur on the top of the mane, braids and the feet. Next I'm going to do the eyes, and I'm using two colors for this, Ivory and Angel Green. The eyes are very small in this guy, but I'm going to get out my Windsor Newton Double Zero that I saved just for eyes and paint the entire eye with Ivory. Next I'm getting a tiny amount of green and then making a small line of green over half of the Ivory, just so you get a hint of the white on one side and green on the other. The last bit of highlighting I'm going to do before I start the axe is a simple edge highlight on all the gold and bronze jewelry using Glorious Gold.
I save the axe till the end because it takes a while to do, and you may not want to do yours exactly this way, but I'm going to show a basic, true metal metallic technique that's not overly hard, but it certainly makes the axe stand out. So first I'm painting anything that's not a sharpened edge with a one-to-one -one mix of black and plate mail steel. Now really, if you want it to stop there, in one simple step you've already created a more reflective surface on the sharp edges that looks pretty cool, but I'm going to take it a few more steps. The next step is to paint the very edge of the axe with the same black and silver mix. I'm just making a thin line of it, almost like a backwards edge highlight. Then I'm rinsing off the brush and blurring that hard edge, blending the dark into the light. You could also just have a second brush at the ready that's already damp for this. Here I'm just smoothing that out a bit more with a damp brush so that the light and the dark blend together a little better. For the next step I need an even darker color, so I'm at about two parts black, one part silver now. This dark color is getting used in a few places. The first is right along the edge where the blade begins. This is going to help accentuate the reflectiveness of the sharpened edge. And once again I'm using a damp brush to blend that back for a smoother transition. The attachment point is shaped like a cylinder, so I'm painting it dark along the bottom. I'm going to blend that upwards, and then using some pure plate mail steel, I'm going to make a line of reflection along the top surface. I'm back to the darkest color again, and this time I'm making an even smaller line along the axe edge. And since I'm not using a wash, I'm putting some of this into the chip marks as well. Now I'm back to the damp brush, and I'm blending that back into the lighter steel. I'm done with the dark color now, so I'm back to pure plate mail steel, and I'm just cleaning up the edges where the dark meets the light. And one final touch on the attachment point with the plate mail steel. You can see from this angle how much contrast there is between the darkest and the lightest colors. The last step is to pick out the edges of the chip marks with some shining silver. Next I want to create some glowing runes on the axe using these four colors. I'm going to start from darkest to brightest, so I'm painting the entire surface of each rune with Cantora Blue. You can see that I've got my hand on the table and the back of the axe is resting on my hand for stability. Now I'm going to the next brightest color, Kalidor Sky, and painting the runes again, but this time I'm leaving a thin edge of the Cantor Blue showing on each rune. Next is the Kalgar blue, and this time I'm just making a very thin line down the center of each rune. And finally I've mixed equal amounts of white scar into the Kalgar blue, and I'm trying to make an even thinner line down the center of each rune. And this madness has gone on long enough, so I'm going to stop there. Now I'm just doing a couple final touches to the Minotaur. The first is some rust spots on the arm armor. I'm just using a bit of sponge and some Mornfang Brown. I'm getting most of the paint off the sponge, then dabbing a bit onto the armor. Then I'll do the same thing with Riser Rust. Then to finish it off, I'll do a light dry brush with some plate mail steel. And I said earlier that I'd come back to this, so now I'm doing a final highlight on the loincloth with two parts Ogren Camo and one part Death World Forest. And right before I spray this entire thing with a matte varnish, I'm painting the rim of the base with German Grey. The last thing I'm doing for the Minotaur is getting out some of my favorite flock and placing it randomly around the base. And here's the finished Minotaur. A special thank you to all my patrons and to the patrons of Watch It Paint It. Please let us know what you think in the comments. This is Mike from Heroes and Bosses. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.